All right, so today we're gonna start pulling the N52 out of the blue car. It's gonna get the LT drivetrain. So we're gonna get started. Uh, we're first taking off the remaining cowling that's on this car, and we're going to start by disassembling the wiring in the DME box. So we're going to get the DME cover removed, get that out of the way, and then we're going to start working on the wiring. There's a lot of wires in here, and I found the easiest way to get them disconnected is to actually pull out the inner plastic structure of the DME box. You'll see me fight here a second with the connectors before I decide to pull the entire assembly out and it gives you a lot better access to some of the clips. A small flathead screwdriver or a pick is very useful in this area to get some of these connections disconnected as well as unclipping some of the terminals from the plastic enclosure itself. So we'll get the DME connectors removed and pull the DME out. Um, you're going to be able to disconnect everything in this area without cutting anything. The only connector that you're going to be required to disassemble is one of the DME connectors and cutting a few of the zip ties that ret retain some of the connections to the plastic box that will be discarded. So here I'm going to show you the DME connector um, that remains. All the wires are disconnected from here. So this connector, there are two plastic retaining clips that you have to depress to pull this lock out of the side. And then once you get the lock out of the side, you're going to be able to pry the two retaining tabs to release the gray DME connector. And that will disconnect the chassis from the engine harness completely. Now you just have to do the power and ground connections on the strut tower. So next we're going to remove two of these main strut braces. These are all e-torx bolts, so if you don't have a set of e-torx sockets, you'll definitely need those for disassembling one of these cars. E-torx as well as regular torx. So before you start working on them, make sure you have a set of those. So get this main bolt out here and then the two reinforcement bars can slide out. Then we're going to start removing some of the cooling system. These clips that hold the hoses on all these BMW connections have a spring clip. They just get pried up and then you can work the connection a little bit. Sometimes they can be pretty stuck, but as soon as you get it to move, they'll slide right off. We're going to come over here and get the intake box out of the way and keep removing the rest of the front end. Disconnect the upper radiator hoses here. Again, these are the same type of connections with the spring clip. The larger hoses can be a lot harder to disconnect, so you just wiggle them around, use a little lubricant if you need, and they should pop through. Now we're going to move over to the power steering lines on the front end. These go to the power steering cooler. These are a quick connect type fitting. Uh, you don't need any special tools to disconnect them, but you have to push and pull the connectors to get them unclipped. Now we're going to move over to the front end. We're going to get the bumper off, um, all the hardware that retains it, as well as the front core support. And we'll start pulling the entire front end of the car off. Now we got our bumper off and get that out of the way. This car's been apart before, so some of the fog lights were already disconnected. And now we're gonna remove the headlights to get them out of the way.
There's five torx bolts that hold these in, two on the top, two on the side, and one on the back side. You have to remove the fender liner to access. You pull them free and then get the connector disconnected. Sometimes a pick can be useful to get these connections as they can be pretty tight. We're gonna get the AC lines out of the way. It's already been evacuated, so we didn't have an explosion interface. Put all the front end bolts back in so we don't lose anything. I always tend to lose these bolts, and they are a little bit special. All of the special bolts, I just try to put back where they came from. And we're gonna get the transmission cooler lines disconnected from the trans cooler. Again, they have two little retaining clips. You can work them off. And then the one cooling line on the passenger side gets disconnected. And at this point, we should be about ready to disconnect the entire front end. Just a couple of electrical um, connections and zip ties for the fan. The other thing you also need to disconnect here is the hood latches. They're held on by some small Torx bolts and you can get the hood cable out of the way. All right, so we've got a radiator off. The front of the car is clear now. So you can see those hoses that we disconnected. These are power steering. These are trans cooler. This is the water line for the trans cooler. And the other water line is built into the back of the radiator, lower radiator hose. So now we can start unbolting our power steering because we're going to leave this entire power steering pump, lines, hoses, reservoir, all is going to stay with the car. So we're going to unbolt that, pull it off to the side. So what we're going to work on getting disconnected here is the power steering. So the LSE9X accessory drive kit retains the stock power steering pump and pulley and all of the lines. So we're going to be disconnecting the power steering and setting it aside while we pull the motor. None of the lines at the rack need to get disconnected. Just unbolt it from the engine assembly. And there's two bolts on the back side of the power steering pump that are a little difficult to get to. Two more e-torx. You can use an extension to break those loose and then get the power steering pump out of the way. We're going to get the rest of the AC lines disconnected from the firewall. That line's going to go with the motor all the way to the AC compressor as well as the remaining heater core line. Now we're going to jump to the underside of the car and get some of the things disconnected on the bottom. All right. so. Got some plastics to get out of the way here. This car was already taken apart some, so it's still, uh, some of it's missing. But we'll get a couple pieces of plastic out of the way. And we can go ahead and start pulling out the exhaust. And trans cross member and drive shaft. Um, we're probably going to not use this drive shaft in the car, so I'll probably just pull it all the way off the differential here and pull everything. Um, we gotta drop the exhaust to get to it. So start at the front and get these plastics off. Pull this hanger, this cross member, this hanger, this hanger, and this hanger. Drop the whole exhaust down. So, torque's on here. Forty-five. I don't remember. Yep.
That'll catch it. Pop this guy off. Free. It's hung up on this exhaust hanger. Yeah. Ooh, that's a little precarious. This is where I could use some help. Well, let's lower this down and see what happens. Okay, maybe we can pick this up in the middle. Yep. Okay. There we go. Lost off. sizes on these cars. Thirteen. Put that one back. I don't know why that one's special. What they lost shield out. That one will be maybe going back in. Now we can get to our Grebo. Um, we can just disconnect this side to get it out. We don't need to pull the back. So these are 18s and these are really tight. So you get the big impact and an 18 open end. Get that off. Could disconnect the shifter. This is a 13. Open end wrench. Crack that loose. This cable will. going to use my shift bracket you're going to want to save some of these parts it's going to be a 4080 or a 60 you can use a stock shifter don't lose that that's a piece you need you need that clip you need this bracket and you need this assembly so leave that like that for now put this clip on here so we don't lose it hurt my fingers Okay, that's in there. Now, this will all come out with the car, motor mount, motor mount, ground strap. Don't forget the ground strap. Ground strap will hold you up. Extension. Good place for a ground. Put the nut back on. That way you can use it. I don't like using these. They get corroded. I'm not sure why. Regular pre-made ground cables are cheap. I like to use those. So, bust that guibo off the drive shaft. Trans mount, motor mount. I think she's ready to come out. Switched on my gas. 
All right, look, fuel line's disconnected now. I'm not gonna get hung up when we pull the motor. So this whole thing will go with it. And we can adapt this in the car. So let's go ahead and drop it down. Get those motor mounts loose. All right, I think. <clears throat> Got that loose. Pull this around our car steering. But I think now we are free. The C lines are gonna go with it. All the wiring is disconnected. All this wiring just stay right on top. Probably pull that out of the way. 